Hi, this is Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings, and today I wanted to talk about how to use reinforcement effectively. So we're going to talk about four key things to remember when using and delivering reinforcers to be most effective and efficient. And I learned the acronym DISC, and that stands for deprivation, immediacy, size, and contingency. So first is deprivation. In order for a reinforcer to be most effective, it needs to be something that the individual or the organism does not already have a lot of access to. That doesn't mean that the individual never gets it, just that it is restricted and that it is something that the organism um, is not full of already. They're not habituated to it. They're not satiated with it. Um, they are in some state of deprivation from that. The second one is immediacy. So when we deliver a reinforcer, we want to deliver the reinforcer immediately when the behavior occurs. If we take a few seconds, it's possible that we might be reinforcing the behavior that is happening now when we hand the item that happened after the target that we wanted to increase. So for example, I always coach people, you know, if you're using reinforcers to have those reinforcers, whether they're items or tokens or points or something like that in your hand ready to deliver or in your lap ready to deliver, because if you have to turn around and look for that item and then pull it back up and that takes you maybe five seconds, your learner could be picking their nose when you hand them the item, which means now you might be reinforcing picking their nose instead of whatever it was that you were trying to reinforce. Now, one way that we can um, sort of buy a little bit of time is by pairing our praise and our words with the delivery of the object or the token so that then once our praise is functioning as a conditioned reinforcer, then just saying, yes, good job, you got it, while you find the thing is enough to reinforce and pinpoint that particular behavior. When training an animal, they often use the clicker to pinpoint that behavior, and then they deliver the treat afterwards. And your praise can be the same sort of thing. So immediacy, we want to make sure that we are delivering the reinforcer immediately when the behavior occurs that we want to reinforce. We also want to make sure that the reinforcer that we're using is something that the learner doesn't have free access to, that deprivation. If they know that they're going to get it as soon as you leave, then they're not likely to work for it while you're there. So it might be that you bring something or that things are restricted for use just during those learning sessions. So the third thing is size. Um, when using reinforcers, we want to make sure that we're considering the size and sort of the, the cost benefit ratio. Um, if I'm asking my learner to do a lot of work, but then I'm giving them like an eighth of a Skittle, um, that's probably not going to be a big enough size to reinforce that behavior. Alternatively, if I am giving um, my learner an easy task, a, a simple instruction, and then I'm reinforcing them with a whole bowl full of Skittles or, you know, an hour of iPad time or electronics time, they're probably going to habituate or satiate on that reinforcer and it's probably not going to be effective in the future. So we have to find a good balance where the amount of work for this amount of reinforcer makes sense for the learner. The learner is still willing to work for that amount and that amount is not too much for the learner. So we have deprivation, immediacy, and size. The last one is contingent. And this is the one that sometimes we don't even realize that we're not doing. So contingent means that we are delivering the reinforcer 
for the targeted behavior when and only when that behavior occurs. If we are delivering the reinforcer for other things, our learner may not discriminate and learn which thing, which behavior we are trying to increase. I'll give you an example. Oftentimes we talk about wanting to reinforce prompted, prompted trials or um, approximations towards the, our goal. And those are super important so that we can maintain the attempts, we can maintain those attending behaviors, we can maintain the effort um, and reinforce the effort put in even for a prompted trial. That being said, if we are giving a reinforcer for every prompted trial and every correct trial, our learner is not differentiating between those responses. They don't know which one we want more than the other because the consequences of prompted trials and independent trials are exactly the same. So what you might need to do is change your schedule of reinforcement for your prompted trials or for your approximations where sometimes prompted trials do get a reinforcer, but every time the target independent correct behavior occurs, that gets a reinforcer. Then our learner is experiencing different schedules of reinforcement and they're gonna allocate their behavior towards the schedule of reinforcement that pays out better, which will be the correct or independent responding. So contingently, if we're handing it out, well, that was a good try, here you go, or that was it, here you go. If there's no difference in being correct or incorrect or being helped, then our learner's behavior is not going to become more correct or independent. Instead, we have to deliver the reinforcer contingent upon the correct target independent behavior that we're working on. And we could potentially use leaner schedules of reinforcement if we do still need to reinforce prompted trials. That's not always the case though. For many learners, after they've contacted prompted trials for a while, um, contacted reinforcement for prompted trials for a while, they don't need that. Instead, if they are not being successful, we need to change the setup and do something else or come back to this or get a better reinforcer. It's not about a skill deficit at that point. It's probably motivational or environmental. So to recap, the four things that you want to keep in mind in order to use reinforcers effectively Deprivation, you want to select something that the learner doesn't have free access to so that they're motivated to work for it. Immediacy, you want to deliver that reinforcer um, immediately when the target behavior occurs so that they know exactly which behavior you want to see more of. Size, we want to make sure that we are paying enough and not paying too much so that it's worth it. We don't want our learner to habituate or satiate on the reinforcer too quickly. We also want to make sure that it is enough of an amount to actually reinforce and be worth the effort for that behavior. And the fourth one is contingent. We want to deliver the reinforcers contingent upon the target behavior. And we want to lean, uh, we want to fade the other schedules. If we have other schedules in place, we want to fade those out so that it's very clear what the target behavior is. So I remember it as DISC, D-I-S-C. Let me know if you have other ways to remember those or if you were taught different strategies. Thanks.